So once again, I'm Jamie, and um, in short, my research will focus on um, integrating computer science into the Chilean high school system. So I thought I'd start off by talking about the inspiration for this research. Um, that is Startup Chile. So what is Startup Chile? That is a government initiative that recruits foreign entrepreneurs to start early stage companies within the country. Um, Chile's economy is very materials based. It's a lot of uh, copper mining. So um, the idea here is to diversify the economy and start a technology sector here. And um, <clears throat> as you can see on the right, it's gotten a lot of positive international press for this innovative approach to diversifying the economy. Essentially what it does <clears throat> is give participants funding in exchange for their relocation to Chile. Um, so just to touch on why Startup Chile is a little bit different than traditional sources of venture funding. Um, in the US, a venture capital firm would give funding in exchange for a percent ownership of that company. Startup Chile is a little bit different because they give funding and all they ask is that the company stay in Chile for six months. So it's a pretty good deal. The companies are free to relocate wherever they want after their six months and it's been really successful so far. It's a little early to measure the results, but so far, <clears throat> sorry, take a little sip of water. Um, so far it's been gotten a lot of positive press. And um, when I started writing my proposal, Startup Chile only had one program, but now they have three. So S Factory gives funding to female-led startups in the early concept stage. The SEED um, program gives money to companies kind of like an angel investor would. It's a concept, but they don't have a prototype yet. And the SCALE program gives money to a company that maybe has a prototype or a little bit of early success, but they haven't built it out fully. They just need more money to get going. And um, in terms of monetary value, um, it ranges from about 15,000 US dollars all the way to about 90,000 US dollars. Um, so who's receiving this funding? You can see that Chileans are the second largest group of funding recipients, but there's also a lot of people from other countries receiving funding, which is kind of the point to bring entrepreneurs here. But ultimately, Although they're really good at attracting foreign entrepreneurs, the program doesn't really have an, uh, a plan for how to train Chileans to work in this new technology sector here. Um, and that really interested me. So taking a look at the data, if you consider all the factors that make a country favorable to uh, technology, um, Chile's worst scores in school. So this is the global entrepreneurship's Global Entrepreneurship Monitor's entrepreneurial framework conditions, and if a country ranks really well in all of these nine conditions, they're considered fertile for um, startups to move their business here. And Chile's worst score, worst score is in schools, um, specifically at the early education stage. So I wanted to make a quick note here. Um, Chile's universities are really great. They have a ton of technical programs, they're very advanced. Um, what I want to focus on is this weak spot in early education. Um, my focus would be to educate Chilean high school students how to, um, the opportunities afforded to them in technology sector jobs, and also to <coughs> better prepare them for jobs in the technology sector. Um, so that's kind of the answer to the question, why Chile's high schools? Um, ultimately, my research will aim to answer the question, what are the most effective methods of teaching technical skills like computer science in Chile? Um, in the wake of programs like Startup Chile, how can the government go even further and prepare Chilean students for roles in these early stage tech companies? And um, to answer this question, I'm going to look at both the technology companies as well as the schools that prepare students for these roles. So I'm kind of breaking it down into three phases. 
Um, in this first phase, I'll be focusing on the companies, and in the second and third, focusing on the education side. Um, in phase one, I'll seek to answer the question, what are the skills that are most needed at startups? Um, in the second phase, I want to understand broadly the Chilean education landscape, what is working at these schools right now. And then in the third phase, I'm going to try and answer the question, what are the most effective methods of teaching the relevant skill set that I identified in phase one? Um, and the ultimate goal is to quantify the skill gap in Chile and see if we could bridge that gap through early education. Um, in terms of timeline, um, I really see uh, these first two phases as context or setting up for the third phase. In the third phase, I'll actually be able to experiment and answer the research question of what are the most effective methods of teaching. So jumping into the specifics of each phase, um, in the first part, I am going to try and understand the skill gap. So what skills are most needed at Chilean startups? What are companies really struggling to hire for? What skill sets are, um, are companies recruiting people from outside the country for? Um, I want to understand the uh, human capital needs of startups with two ways. So in the first way, I'll be observing interviews, trying to get, gain um, qualitative data about their hiring process. And then in the second method, I'm going to try and quantitatively understand the problem by performing an analysis of um, newly hired employees and their relevant skill sets. Um, ultimately, the goal of this phase is to have a short list of um, skill sets that startups are really um, struggling to hire for. And um, just to clarify, um, in this context, when I use the word skill, it's something that would be on a job resume or a um, job uh, posting. So SQL database management, Python programming. I want to be as concrete as possible about understanding the skills that um, are relevant to the workforce right now. And. In, the phase, in phase two, I hope to understand the Chilean high school system broadly and identify what's currently working in schools. To do this, I'll analyze publicly available data from the Agencia de Calidad de la Educación to identify top performing schools. And I wanted to add a quick caveat about this data. Um, Computer science or technical skills um, in that vein are likely not taught in many public high schools and they're definitely not tested. So uh, as a proxy for how good a school could be at teaching a technical um, quantitative skill set, I'm gonna be uh, using math performance as a proxy for that. Um, this is gonna give me a good idea of the skills that have already demonstrated success in teaching quantitative reasoning skills. Um, in terms of the methodology, the data set contains lots of attributes like student to teacher ratio, and I'm going to do a regression analysis to identify which attributes are highly correlated with strong performance in math. Um, that is only going to serve as the basis for further hypotheses into what methods could be most effective at teaching other technical skills like computer science. Um, and the ultimate objective of this phase is to get a short list of top performing schools that would be good candidates for further research. I see this phase kind of as a jumping off point. Um, I really want to understand the education landscape before going to schools and doing any type of experimentation. So this is going to be my way to kind of dive in and understand what's happening right now. Um, and then finally, in phase three, I'm actually going to visit a sample of the schools I identified in the previous phase with the goal of understanding not just what indicates strong performance in, in math, but how to effectively teach computer science. 
So in this third and final phase, I'll actually be able to answer my research question, what are the most effective methods of teaching technical skills um, like computer science in Chile? Um, to do this, I'm going to conduct 10 case studies on the high schools. And once again, I'll attack the program from two, or the problem from two sides. So I'll first go and observe classrooms and interview teachers. And then secondly, I'll conduct controlled experiments to test various methods of teaching the skills that I identified in phase one. Um, and ultimately, the goal here is to have concrete evidence pointing to effective methods of integrating technical skills into the Chilean high school curriculum. So I couldn't do this research alone, and I wanted to extend a huge thank, thank you to Professor Castaneda, who is right here. And um, he is a, um, a super busy professor at the University of Santiago. He is, I'll just dive in, he's um, one of those connector type people. <laughs> Sorry, I just chose no, one. No, no, no. He's, I would describe him as one of those connector type people who just always want to introduce you to other people and have a huge network of students and academic types that they're always in contact with. So I expect to leverage his connections to get my research in front of the right people and hopefully influence some change. And then I'm also going to be auditing um, Actually, I think I'm fully enrolling, but <laughs> taking classes at the uh, University of Santiago, Chile in um, computer engineering. And this was really important for me to not just observe, but to actually become a student here and understand how things are taught and kind of get an idea of the student's perspective. It is going to be at the university level, not the high school level, but that was um, really important for me to do that here and Professor Castaneda has helped me a lot through that process. And um, so I realize that it's going to be very difficult to convince students to participate in my experiments and I definitely don't just want to be asking people to do things for me, I want to be giving as well. So I hope to organize sporting events in exchange for participation in my experiments. Um, I think a dodgeball tournament would be really fun, but for a <laughs> smaller group of participants who are very um, involved, I'd love to take them surfing. Um, I know the co-founder of the Valpo Surf Project, and he could help me organize a safe way to do this, um, so that's also on the radar. <laughs> And then, uh, just to summarize, I want to expand upon the work that Startup Chile is already doing and close the gap between high school education and job attainment. Um, I want to make my website as accessible as possible online, visualize my findings, make them interactive, because um, I think this is the best way to get my stuff out there. And then, I also want to have meetings with stakeholders. Um, and ask them to consider revising the curriculum to include technical skills. And then finally, um, I was going to pass around a piece of paper, but I didn't get that ready yet. Um, I am going to be launching a website, and if you guys want to write down your emails, if you're interested, I can send you links when um, I publish new articles as well as when it's live. Five minutes for questions, so please. What do you think is going to be the hardest part? Oh, like, because you have a lot of different components in your research. What do you think is going to be the hardest and most challenging thing to actually pull off doing? Um, definitely the third phase. <laughs> the, um, in my experience, people or Chileans are respond well to face-to-face -face contact, so there's going to be a lot of traveling to schools and um, asking them if 
I could speak to their students for a few minutes in order to uh, kind of educate people about the experiments I'll be running and like organizing an event, event planning is always very difficult. Um, but in order to kind of mitigate how hard that's going to be, I really want to tackle the first two phases as quickly as possible because those are kind of where I'm just learning and gathering information. Um, I want to be super vigilant about doing that um, uh, quickly in the beginning so I can get down to the meat of my research later. I have a question. It sounds like you have a pretty technical background yourself. Did that start early on for you or kind of later in life, academically speaking? Um, it started after my internship at uh, the junior, summer before senior year of college. Um, I worked at a startup and completely revised my major to take more technical classes. Um, and then since working, up, since working at the startup, I've done a lot of um, more technical projects just because I, I don't know, I found that Programming and engineering is a lot more um, exciting to me than some of the traditional business stuff that I studied in college. And um, I don't know, I just really liked it. So I guess it has come a little bit later on in life. Um, I don't really have a question, but a comment. Uh, my project is going to be technology related in robotics, so we should talk. Yeah. And nice um, that. I'm also interested in startup chilling, so I think I'll learn from you. Yeah, totally. I did see that there was um, someone else doing like, technical stuff, and so it would be really cool to learn. Um, where would you access the Agencia de Calidad de la Educación? Just because I think I should access that too for my project. Yeah, so um, they, I'm actually not sure what it stands for, but it's called SIMCE, S-I-M-C-E. Yeah. yeah, what does that stand for? I never read one. <laughs> yeah. It's a a way to basically to assess the yeah, and so when I, when I first um, found the data set, anyone could access it, but now you need a root just to download the files, which is super easy, but um, they test performance in math, reading comprehension, and I'm forgetting the other one, and then they also have just kind of the data about the schools, um, and it's, it's pretty incredible. Have more time for questions. I think uh, once we get to lunch, everybody can get together. Uh, the next person, because it's uh, Lauren.